Alrighty friends, today I want to talk to you about something that I, I saw today with a buyer who was looking to purchase a home. And on this particular property, the house was from, you know, the early 80s, but it's been 20 years since it was pumped out. Who knew what we were going to find? Let's get into it. So this particular buyer was looking to purchase a home. The house was built in 1984. The uh, house itself was in pretty good shape. Like they took very well meticulous care of this system or of the entire house and most of the systems within it. But the one thing that spooked this buyer just a little bit was they haven't pumped it since 2000, right? It's been 24 years since anybody's been at that tank, looked at that tank, did anything with that tank whatsoever. It's a gamble, right? So I roll up to the property, uh, meet the buyer, we talk, everything looks like it's in pretty good shape. We, we pop open the septic tank, uh, take a look, see what we're working with. And as soon as I open it, uh, you can see that it actually looks like it's working, right? The water level's right where it belongs. And you might be saying, well, I thought you had to pump out your tank. And you do, right? If you ever have anybody telling you you don't have to pump out the tank, they're wrong. Right? There's far more evidence showing the benefits of pumping a tank versus letting it kind of do its own thing. Uh, in a perfect world, perfect ecology, perfect bacteria, perfect biome, all that good stuff, right additives, you could go without ever having to pump the tank. We don't live in a perfect world though, right? So no matter what you do, you're going to have problems that pop up. You're going to have things that you have to do and things that you have to address. So all of the leading research is showing that you want to get it pumped out every two to five years, depending on occupancy, health, use, et cetera, how many solids you're putting down there. So pop open the tank. First great thing is looks normal, right? That's what I like to see. I've had plenty of them where, oh, it's been 20 years since we pumped it. As soon as you open the lid, it's like you're cracking a beer can. It just hisses at you. And then there's just a ton of water in the tank. Can't see nothing. Everything's backed up because the drain fields have failed. So this house looks good, pop it open, look inside the tank, baffles look good, everything's good to go. Pull out my, my sludge judge, which is how we measure the solids, to figure out how full is the tank. Stick the sludge judge into that tank, and I measure 36 inches of solids in a four foot liquid depth tank. So that is a ton of sludge inside of that tank, right? The issue with having that much solids in the tank is that little bits are going to be working their way to the drain field right if you let the tank get above 30 percent of the total volume with solids you run the risk of debris working its way into the drain field or the pipe causing clogs or premature failure right the term we use for that's called biomap that it's it's like a really sticky substance it's biologic material it's poo right what will happen is no matter what you do, you flush a toilet, run a sink, bathtub, all that stuff goes to the tank. Well, uh, the solids should fall out of suspension and should fall to the bottom of the tank and the lighter stuff should float to the top of the tank, but it doesn't always quite work out that way. Sometimes it stays in suspension and it just, as you run the water, it just works its way into the drain field. So as time goes on, the drain fields are gonna have water going to it. The, or by water, I mean effluent. It'll have the water going to it. The biomat also comes with that water. It causes saturation in the soil, plugs it up, makes it to where the water can't escape. Over time, what'll happen is those drain fields will be so saturated that it's got nowhere else to go but up or back. And that's what causes a backup, right? At that point, the drain fields, it's done. It's, it's toast. There's not much you can really do to it. You'll find that people will say, oh, you can use this kind of additive or that kind of additive or this treatment or that treatment. None of that stuff has any evidence that it works, right? If somebody's going to tell you sell you a miracle cure for your septic, it's probably not going to work, right? Just think about back in the uh, cowboy era with the guys who would sell the hair tonics to help you grow your hair longer, or if you're balding, get it back, right? None of that stuff works. There's no proof on it. But regardless, this septic system uh, had not been pumped in 20 years. The drain field was dry. We introduce water, we do a hydraulic load test. We're trying to see, is it still draining properly? It does. We put about 300 gallons of water through. The design spec for this house was 725, right? It's an occupied home. We put about half of the daily peak flow through. Didn't see it do anything. Didn't back up. Everything was working. Everything was draining. The drain field was dry. 
the buyer's like, well, how can this be? They haven't pumped the tank in 20 years. Well, yeah. I mean, sometimes you get lucky, right? You go to the casino, say you could be gambling all night, losing money hand over fist as everybody does. And then you can have that one guy who's just living on top of the world. He hit the jackpot. Sometimes that's how it is, right? You can have somebody who completely does not take care of the tank at all, hasn't touched it in 20 years. It looks fine, it's working. Now they do have a stupid amount of solids in that tank that need to get pumped out. It's not, that's too much. It's not enough. <laughs> it's, you don't have enough water in there for it to, to work properly. When I put my sludge judge in there, which is basically just a stick with a ping pong ball at the bottom of it to get like a core sample. Essentially it's like if you took a straw into a cup of water and put your finger on top, the same concept you could just stand it on the amount of sludge like you had to push it through to get all the way to the bottom of the tank that's too thick that no you're not allowed to do that so it was working everything looked fine and so he asked me well do i need to worry about pumping it from there on and my answer is yes you need to make sure you pump it and the reason why is because he got lucky does not mean that you will get lucky and this is the message for you who is listening pump your tank it's worth every penny it makes your drain fields last longer right there is far more evidence and far more research showing that to be the case than somebody who says, oh no, he's just trying to sell you on something or oh no, you don't need to do it. This septic system's designed to function without the need of any kind of pumping. That's hogwash, it's not true, that's not how that works. Don't believe everything you read, don't believe everything you hear, right? Think about it. If you are putting in solids into a tank, the argument is, that you've got bacteria from your gut that continues to digest and break down the solids. There's only so much solids that that bacteria can break down so fast before it starts to build up again. And then you run into the same problem of stuff backing up or causing problems. Just make sure you pump out your tank. In our area, some places will actually have uh, county rebates, right? So some counties like Frederick County and Howard County, they'll actually give you money as a homeowner to pump your tank. Now you have to pump it with a licensed contractor, of course, which you should always be doing because that is a hazardous material and can come back to find you if you're illegally dumping sewage, right? So, but you wanna make sure that you get it pumped by a licensed contractor. And then all you do is you fill out a, a half a page form, submit it to the county, they mail you a check, right? Some counties will give you 30 bucks, some counties will give you a hundred bucks. It just depends on how many failures they're seeing because what they're trying to do is get people to pump out their tanks a little bit more often. So that way they get less failures in the area, right? By pumping it, you're able to go a lot longer and not have to worry about any kind of issues. Um, if you're not taking care of the tank, you are playing with fire, you are asking for those drain fields to fail, you're asking to spend a ton of money on it, right? In our area, a drain field replacement can be easily ten to $15,000. It's not worth it, right? So this buyer, he's, he's pleased with the results. Everything looked like it was in pretty good shape. I didn't see any problems. It drained the way it's supposed to drain. The only real thing to do is pump the tank and keep pumping it regularly, right? I hope that this was able to give you a little bit more insight into the world of well and septic. If you appreciate uh, the value or if you think that I have any value that I'm adding to your world, please hit that like button, subscribe. I have more content posted every day on the world of well and septic. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Ask me to cover a topic. I don't mind. I try to get to all of my comments as fast as I can. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit hard. I don't see all of them for some reason. Um, till next time though, guys.